Hey guys, we are going to review the different ways that we have learned how to represent exponential functions. So let's start with equations. Remember we have y equals a times b to the x. a is the initial value and b is the growth or decay rate. So on this first one, I have y equals four times two thirds to the x. The a value is four, since that's the number out in front. The b value is two thirds, since that is what is being raised to the exponent. And then since two thirds is less than one, that means that this is a decay function. Let's look at the next one. The a value is 0 0.5, since that's the number that's being put out front. And then the number being raised to the exponent is five halves. And since five halves is greater than one, that means that this is an exponential growth function. Okay, then we also learned how to write exponential functions from graphs. We're still gonna use this form, y equals a times b to the x. A is the y-intercept, and then b is the growth or decay rate, which remember we can figure out by doing y2 divided by y1. So let's look at this first one. A is the y-intercept, which I see on my graph is one. And then to find B, I'm gonna do y2 divided by y1. So I need to identify some consecutive points. And I like to do this by making a table just to help me organize my thinking. And I'm gonna fill in the table with two consecutive points from the graph. So I see a point right here at zero, one, and then the consecutive point after it is right there at one, three. So zero, one, and one, three. That means that one is y one and three is y two. So I can do three over one and get three for the b value. So that means my equation is just going to be y equals three to the x. Since the y-intercept is one, I don't have to put a one out in front there, it's implied. Okay, let's look at the next one. Let's find the a value or the y-intercept first, which I see right here at two. And then I'm gonna find the b value by doing y two divided by y one. So I'm gonna make a table with consecutive ordered pairs. I have my y-intercept, and it looks like I can use the point right behind it too. So the y-intercept was zero, two, and then the point right after it was at one, one. So two is y, one, and y is y, two. So when I do y, two divided by y, one, I will get one over two. So the b value is just one half, so that means that our equation is y equals two times one half to the x. All right, we also learned how to write exponential functions from tables. So a is still the y-intercept, and remember we can see that in a table when, the, which is the y value when x is zero. And then the b value again is the common ratio. So let's start with this one. The a value is 12, since that's the y value when x is zero. And then to find b, I will do y2 divided by y1. You can use any two consecutive points in this table. I'm going to use the first two points. So 12 is y1, and then three is y2. So when I do y2 divided by y1, I'll get three over 12, which simplifies to one fourth. So my equation for this situation is y, equals 12 times 1 fourth to the x. All right, next table. The y-intercept is the y value when x is zero, so it is six here. And then to find b, I will do y2 divided by y1. I'm gonna use six is y1 and 30 is y2. So I will do 30 divided by six, which is five. So my equation would be y equals six times five to the x. 
Okay, then the last one is word problems. So in word problems, A is that initial value, and then B is the growth or decay rate, and it can help yourself to think about what rate is the situation increasing or decreasing by. So we're gonna match the word problems below to their correct equation on the right over here. So let's look at this first one. It says Patricia's car has a starting value of $20,000. So we have an A value of 20,000 and it depreciates at a rate of 33% each year. So we are depreciating at a rate of 33% each year. So that means I would have to do the exponential decay function, which is A times one minus R to the X. So it would be 20,000 times one minus 33% as a decimal is 0.33 to the X. And one minus 0.33 is 0.67. So I need 20,000 times 0.67 to the X, which is D. This function right here, 20,000 times 0.67 to the X. Okay, so we've used function D. Let's look at the next one. It says there were 20,000 cases of the flu reported in January. It is expected that each month there will be a third of the cases as the previous month. So the A value is 20,000. That's how much we started with. The B value, it says that there will be a third of the cases. So that means that they're just going to be one third of the cases. So B is one third. So that would be equation B right here. Y equals 20,000 times one third to the X. All right, the next one says Jenny made a $20,000 investment that is doing incredibly well. It is expected to triple each year. So that means that our A value is 20,000 since that's what she started with and her investment's going to triple, so the B value is three. So that looks like function A. And then we know that this last one must be C, but let's make sure. It says, Ronnie bought a highly sought after vintage car for $20,000. The value of the car increases at a rate of 33% each year increases at a rate of 33% each year. That means we would be using the function y equals a times one plus the rate to the x value. So it would make sense if the rate was 1.33 because we would do one plus 0.33 according to the growth function. So this last one is C like we talked about.